you know, the, the really interesting thing about agriculture uh, in the developing world specifically is around insurance. So in the US and in most developed countries, 100% of the farmers are insured, meaning if they lose their crop for some you know, bad weather, not enough water, not enough rain, or too much rain, they'll get compensated by the insurance company and they don't lose their uh, livelihood for that year. That's not the case in the developing world. The uptake for crop insurance in most developing countries is 15%, in some cases even lower. Uh, the reason for that is that deploying crop insurance in these countries is very complex for the insurance companies because they lack a lot of data. Uh, insurance is always based on data, so the more you know about the history of the weather, the history of crops, and the real time, what actually happened, the better you, products you can offer, the more the lower premium you can offer and the more people you can attract, right? Um, what happens in the developing world is that you have such scarcity of data that insurance companies either don't even offer these solutions or they do, but at prices that don't make sense for anyone. Um, and big part of it is weather data because crop insurance is all about the weather. Uh, and so if you can move from, say, having you know, 1,000 sensing points in a country like India, which is more or less what the government has and what the crop insurance industry there is relying on, to having 100,000 sensing points, which is what we have, all of a sudden you move from you know, every farmer being maybe 20, 30 kilometers from their nearest weather station, which is not good, it's very far, to every farmer being maybe one kilometer from the nearest weather station, which means the weather data that the crop insurance company will have is very, very relevant to what actually happened in that specific farm versus something that's you know, 20, 30 miles away, it can be completely different weather. So reducing that friction, reducing that uncertainty can help crop insurance products become much cheaper and then increase the penetration and actually save uh, a lot of money and help millions of farmers across the globe. So precision agriculture is a big buzzword and everybody is talking about it, but again, to make it work, you need data because you need to know if it rained or not and if it's going to rain or not before you irrigate. Uh, again, today you cannot do these kind of applications in most of a developing world, which is where most of the food in the world is actually being grown, most of the crops. Uh, we can enable these applications, again, because once you add these super high resolution weather data into the precision ag applications, now all of a sudden you can make much better decisions on when do I apply fertilizers? When do I apply you know, herbicides? When do I irrigate? And then your um, yields increase, your efficiency increase, and you reduce, the, again, the risk and the friction of uh, very underdeveloped food systems. It's a long process. It's not going to take one day. So it's going to take us a couple of years to you know, really implement all these solutions. Uh, we, because we understand that it's a long process, we started a lot of things really early. And all of these long processes are already um, in the making. So we have you know, proof of concepts and trials and even paid customers in, in many of these you know, verticals I just described, specifically in crop insurance and, uh, and, and precision agriculture around the globe. And you know, one, two years, you show that it's working and you have several, say, thousands of farmers using it, and then the next year it can really boom. So that's, that's the goal.